So technology has obviously transformed medicine in ways that are too numerous to count, and we've reached a new phase of technology's impact on healthcare. It's a time when man and machine and technology, uh, they begin to, to take us in directions we never thought imaginable, but we can blend them, and that gives physicians power Power that's good and power can be used the wrong way. I'm joined by two innovators who will describe healthcare technology that seems to come from the pages of science fiction, virtual reality, which is something that I've been fascinated by and is gaining huge traction uh, nationally. Please welcome David Rue and Mike Muller. Uh, so just a little background on myself. My name is Dave Rue. I'm the chief medical officer for Samsung. And uh, let me just go there. Uh, what, one of the things that you probably think about Samsung, you know us for the smartphones, uh, you know Samsung for the TVs, the home appliances, but what you may not realize is that Samsung actually has a deep and long-standing commitment to healthcare. Uh, we have a mission to improve the health of a billion people by 2020. So that means we really have to go outside of the hospital setting and even outside of our facilities and think, how can we do that? So digital health is a big part of what we've been trying to do. And as we think about digital health, there's so many different ways that we can engage the patient and the consumer and healthcare providers. But one that has really gotten a lot of attention, and rightfully so, is virtual reality. And when we think of virtual reality, we typically think of it as a, a tool for entertainment, and maybe these are mechanisms where we could provide some value of uh, improving the experience in a hospital, or maybe even as a means for medical training. But what we're really talking about is something different here. We're talking about using virtual reality to treat medical conditions. Uh, and as part of that, we sometimes refer to this as therapeutic VR. So to give you some ideas of how this is currently being used, I'd like to show you a video, and then we'll talk a bit about the science behind that. So we could run the video, please. A star Paralympian who lost most of her vision as a teenager has been granted the gift of sight thanks to an incredible piece of technology. Jess Gallagher received a life-changing virtual reality headset. Today, she was given a priceless gift, the ability to see clearly again after losing most of her vision at age 17. I don't have the ability to see facial expressions, what somebody's wearing, um, and right now, I can see everything. Pretty amazing. The virtual reality headset will help her outlook go from this to this. So what's really amazing, over the past 10 years, we've seen an explosion in terms of the amount of research being done in virtual reality to treat medical conditions. And I'd attribute it to three main reasons. Uh, first is that the technology itself has gotten a lot better. So the visual uh, clarity around this, the ability to hold content on a phone, uh, it's just at the po point where uh, it creates such a vivid and immersive experience. And the second is the fact that it's mobile. So now anyone, anywhere can be able to take this. Uh, they can do it in clinics, they can do it in outpatient facilities, even in one's home. So it allows researchers to be able to experiment on conditions and patients that they hadn't even thought of before. And the third is the cost. It's so incredibly inexpensive. And we Another er really interesting thing that we saw was how VR can be used to help those with low vision. And one of the biggest problems we see today uh, is, in, especially in the aging population, is macular degeneration. It's a common condition. Uh, and if you look at the numbers here, uh, globally we see low vision as a huge impact, over 200 million people that have this. And it causes many, many issues. It, it helps them prevent doing their daily activities. They oftentimes require extra resources to help them. Uh, and you can see the majority of the individuals afflicted are seniors. So one of the things that we oftentimes have uh, been looking at, uh, specifically those in the ophthalmology space, are how can you use and leverage pieces or areas of the eye that are still intact? Because in many cases, while the in macular gener degeneration, while the macula or the fovea is injured and it causes a central blindness, the area around it is still intact. And so what researchers and ophthalmologists often try to do is they try to teach individuals to use that area to find what's called the PRL, it's called the preferred retinal locus, and then use that and be able to, use, uh, to, to see through that. And remarkably, that does work when you can find it. But the challenge is finding it. And so using the VR software, it helps you locate it. So in this example, you can see the typical macula. This is a picture of the retina on the left-hand side. The damage, the scotoma in the middle, and then the PRL off to the side. So you can find it with the, the eye tracking software. It helps 
bring it to the center, magnifies it, and adjusts for the photophobia and all the other elements. And with this technology, we can overcome some of the barriers and help individuals see. So in a clinical trial that was performed at Johns Hopkins, where they wanted to understand how did this impact people's visions and their goals, you can see that the majority or a good number of these individuals had improvement in their functional status. And in fact, in their vision in the baseline, it went from a 2400, which is essentially legally blind, to a 2030. So dramatic improvements in the vision that uh, were achieved by helping the individuals find the PRL and basically en enhance the imagery. So what we are seeing today is really a, a, an amazing uh, innovation that is uh, being accomplished through the use of technology. It's helping individuals with disabilities to overcome those disabilities by helping them identify areas within their body that are still intact and then use their own willpower and their training to be able to practice and be able to uh, develop a level of function that is now providing improve functional status and improve quality of life. This has been cl clinically validated in many studies, and now what we're starting to do is we're starting to think about how this can be deployed as a scalable program. So a really good example with the pain uh, management, we're starting to look at this, how this can be deployed as a means to battle the opioid epidemic by providing this as an opioid sparing alternative, both in the time that uh, narcotics are prescribed by the physician as well as potentially by the time in which individuals that are already on it can we find ways to get them off it. And in this process, we hope to learn a lot, but we're starting to find that there is still a significant opportunity for us to be able to improve the lives of individuals with disabilities by applying this technology. Thank you.